Hello, my name is Brian Wagner, and I'm here today to talk to you about the neuroscience of marketing, or as it's most commonly called, neuromarketing. By the end of this presentation, I hope I've made enough sense that you have a good understanding of what neuromarketing is and aren't as freaked out about the possibilities of it as I am. Just kidding. Well, kinda. Hopefully, you're asking yourself, what is neuromarketing? That's a fantastic question. Neuromarketing is a new area of marketing that focuses on your brain and its reaction to different marketing stimuli. For example, how does your brain react when you watch a commercial? What happens in your brain when you drink a brand name beverage? What sensory input triggers the strongest emotion about a certain product? Essentially, neuromarketing wants to know how our brains react to different types of marketing in the best way. So how does this magical brain testing actually work? Different companies and consulting firms have started working with medical equipment like MRIs and CAT scans and other technology to view real-time responses to such things as brainwave activity and brain chemical changes while consuming a product or viewing advertisements. These scans produce incredible amounts of data for researchers and analysts to review and utilize in different marketing campaigns and product research. The key to all of this is to find what stimulates the brain's pleasure response the most and associate your product with that, which is a very difficult objective to reach. At this point in the presentation, I'd like to show you a quick example of some neural marketing in action. In the video linked below, you will see a Ford commercial with some associated brain activity from the consumers actually watching the commercial. Please pause this video, click the link below to watch it, and then come on back when you're done. All done watching the video? It's pretty amazing, right? Seeing technology telling people how they feel about an ad when the people themselves may not even know. Very interesting. As with most new areas of science, there are two sides to every coin. We have already gone over the intended uses, but there are a few more I'd like to cover. While we have learned many things about the brain with science, there are many things we still don't understand. Neuromarketing is a new way to try to understand how the brain works and how different stimuli cause different people to react to different things. In the end, companies want to use this to have their marketing and production be more effective and therefore more profitable. Additionally, the data gathered in these studies goes deeper than if they don't like or do like something, but how to separate data from different consumer groups to find what products market better in what areas and what doesn't. Being able to target consumer groups much more finely is a very important thing for businesses to have. The other side of the coin is how companies use their super brain reading powers, not for good, but for evil. There are significant concerns from different consumer privacy and safety groups that this type of science, while sounding per perfectly legit on how to help Ford sell cars, could be used to help drug, tobacco, or alcohol companies market their products more efficiently to minors. We could see political campaigns airing ads that could use this kind of science to best find how to spread lies or propaganda to take power in elections. Ralph Nader's consumer advocate group called Consumer Alert put out a statement that says that this type of marketing is not to help heal, but to sell products. And while that's true, and selling products isn't a bad thing, there's something to be said about using science like this to somewhat impose on a consumer's free will even if it's a small amount. It is a very gray area ethically and will continue to be for the foreseeable future. So wrapping this all up, we can ask ourselves what it all means. It's a difficult answer to come up with, but as I said earlier, there are two very distinct sides of the coin. There are very good things that can come from this, such as helping ailing companies succeed, bringing money and jobs into the economy. However, there is a large fear especially in the age of digital privacy issues, this will lead to less privacy and frightening manipulation. You can make your own decision on your own, but we all owe it to ourselves to pay more attention to the surroundings in our life and how things affect us. Thanks for all your attention, and I hope you got something good out of this presentation. I had a great time researching this and learning about neuromarketing. I know I won't look at a TV commercial the same way again.
welcome to the Director's Cut Questions. So you asked what was the most interesting fact I discovered about the topic. For me, the most interesting fact wasn't really a fact, but a scary prediction. The portion I put together on the negative usage of this kind of science really hit me hard. Technology like this can be a very scary thing if used in the wrong hands. It's the kind of thing that no one really notices until someone mentions it to them. Kind of like the arrow in the FedEx logo, but more sinister. How has this project impacted my understanding of behavior or brain function? I know I'm much more aware of what I see in advertisements and product marketing. It's something that is all around us in our lives, and when you stop to look and think about it, you can't help but be somewhat overwhelmed. We buy things because ads make us think we need them, try different foods because of different packaging, and buy songs on iTunes because we hear them in commercials. Target is actually right now selling a song that they use in their summer commercial as a commercial. You kind of have to admire the guts in that promotion. How did I apply all three cognitive learning styles in my creative piece? Audio, visual, and kinesthetic. For audio learners, I made sure to not only cover the bullet points in my slides, but also add more information just to keep them engaged. Visual learners hopefully were able to keep engaged with the different images I used, as well as the video of the Ford commercial. Kinesthetic learners had a chance to stay engaged, while as most mundane as it sounds, by being able to pause the video, click on a YouTube link, watch that, close it, and switch back to this video. I realize that it's pretty hard to keep kinesthetic learners engaged in an AV presentation. It really did help me think out of the box, though.